We're 10 minutes late, so let's get two of you guys ready to meet some Ninja Turtles. Yeah? All right, so we're going to have two of them coming up right now, and then the other two are going to come in a little bit later for the rest of the panel, but the two that are coming in are going to be here right now, and I'm going to introduce them, so give it up for Townsend Coleman and Barry Gordon. have meant a lot in my entire youth life. You guys were the foundation of basically my entire creativity, so it's really cool to see you guys Whoa. here on stage. Thank so, you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, of course. You're welcome. What about you guys? Don't you think so, too? Yeah. Really awesome. And by the way, if you guys have any questions at all, go ahead and line up by the mics, because I'm sure that they would love to take your questions. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. You have a question? You have a question? What projects are you guys currently working on? Actually, I'm retired. I don't do projects anymore. I'm, I have a different kind of thing that I'm doing in my life. I'm teaching uh, in the Master of Fine Arts program at Cal State LA. This is, pro this is Professor Barry. So I'm, I'm teaching acting for stage and camera, and I'm loving every minute of it. I'm just having a great, great time. So it's kind of a second phase of my life. I'm just having a ball. And you're not practicing law. No, 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 no. You That's, guys know that Barry I didn't is a practice lawyer. It's very long. No, I, I you know he's a lawyer. Yeah, no. when we were doing ninja. I like to practice. I didn't like doing it. <laughs> <laughs> he practiced. He just never got I very good at it. Practiced very well. But well, when we were doing Ninja Turtles, recording the sessions back in the the late '80s and early '90s, um, we would be in the recording studio. And there would be Barry sitting at his chair at his mic, just like this, and a copy stand, a script open before him, and on his lap would be one of his big law books. I mean, these things are like this thick. He'd have it open on his lap with his hot yellow highlighter <laughs> and highlighting, reading this thing while we're recording. But he would it was has always been sharp enough to know when his line was coming up and as soon as his line came up he'd look up do his line and then go back to high <laughs> so he got his law degree while we recorded ninja turtles yeah And not only that, let me tell you, I don't know if you guys saw, you know, um, with the new Nick series uh, that, that Robbie's on now as Donatello, um, we had the great privilege of going back and, and doing a, an episode or two, uh, these crossover episodes. Yes. And the one was the Transdimensional Turtles that aired on Easter Sunday. I don't know if you guys saw it. Yeah. It was a, yeah, it was a terrific episode. Yeah. And, and so when we, we were in the, um, Cam, sit down please. Cam. You know, you're really boring. Can I ask a different yeah. question? Yeah. Going to 
on so long. Oh, Jeez. Oh, oh, that's a stumble. Like you think you were Michelangelo or something? <laughs> That was in honor of the Olympics, which start tonight. Right. Yes. Just recently, I looked back, and there was Barry again with a huge book on his lap, highlighting. Always. It was like we had gone back 25 years. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> That must have been one of your one of your professors. I was twelve. It was a professor book. A yeah. professor book. It was a yeah. Professor book. Yeah. I know. So, so, you know, I don't know if you wanted to, uh, do you have any projects that you want to talk about? Oh, I, listen, I just sort of had my daily gig, you know, years ago. Uh, I got um, lucky enough to get into the whole promo realm of the voiceover industry. So I do network promos for ABC, and uh, and I also do daily promos for Live with Kelly and, what well, was Kelly and Michael, but Michael's no longer, so um, they're looking for a co-host. So I do those promos daily. That's what um, really is my bread and butter. And I've been doing... Um, uh, a, a, a little more work with these fine young men yeah. here, which has been a lot of fun. You can look forward to seeing that next season. Next and season, and Nickelodeon Turtles. Yeah. And, uh, and I've been working on a, a really funny show called Mighty Magisorts, and I know Robbie's done some of those too, for um, Kyle Carosa for uh, um, uh, Cartoon Network. And uh, it's debuting, I think, on air this uh, next month. I think it is, yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah, me too. You do? Yeah. Right. Sweet. Yeah. So that's what I'm working on. They were asking about new projects. Oh, well, I'm actually redoing my bathroom. <laughs> Oh, you mean showbiz project? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm redoing Cam's bathroom, and he's in show business. Um, I, um, let's see, we're doing, well, we're almost finishing up season five of Ninja Turtles, uh, Nickelodeon, and um, uh, what else? Uh, oh, a couple things for DreamWorks. I and um, our dear friend, our, all of our friends, uh, Tress McNeil, are working on um, Veggie Tales for, um, uh, Netflix. Do you know? Interestingly, with these new, these new platforms, <clears throat> Netflix is doing something like a thousand episodes of animation. Yeah. Whoa. Strictly and virtually all of them through DreamWorks. Now they're doing um, uh, the um, Penguins of Madagascar. I work on that one. It's called King Ju. All hail King Ju. Oh, cool. Yeah. With Danny Jacobs, fantastic actor. Um, they're doing the Puss in Boots with Eric Bauza. Hey, doing a lot of stuff like that. It's, it's, really, it's really opened up a completely different opportunity for people to not only work, and interesting, you know, Barry Gordon was the president of the Screen Actors Guild for four years? Seven. Seven years, forgive me. Seven Five years counting. The president of the Screen Actors Guild, and why that I'm saying that is because now, as union actors, we have now these new projects to work on for this interesting new platform, like Netflix and new media. Hulu yeah. and New Media and Amazon. But we have a contract for it too, so that's why you're getting, you know, people like Danny Jacobs and Eric Bowes and Tristan Thiel and all these shows because we can do them. So it's a, it's a pretty interesting, yep. new brave new world out there for uh, to work. And you know, you're doing um, collecting my you're doing under the yum yum tree with Scully Mitchell and South Coast Rep, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Cam Clark, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Uh, working on the Lion Guard. Uh, Used to do Simba, but oh well, they got uh, what's his name? Rob, the younger, prettier Simba. They did a younger, pretty, they wanted a you know a younger Cam Clark. Is that what's how does that go in Hollywood? The, what's the circle? Who's oh, Cam? It, yeah, who's, who's Cam, Cam Clark? Clark? Who's Cam Clark? Get, get me Cam. Cam Clark. Get me Cam Clark. Get me a Cam, Cam Clark, Clark type. type. Get, get me, me a younger, younger Cam Clark. Clark. And who's, who's Cam, Cam Clark? Clark? <laughs> He's now at the get me a younger camera. <laughs> oh, I, and I have had uh, younger actors uh, yeah. when they meet me. Oh, I've always wanted oh. to, to meet you, and I'd like to have the career that you had. had. <laughs> I know. We're going. I, I, I think I'm still in the land of have. <laughs> yeah. 
and I'm doing a bunch of games and stuff like that, which of course I'm not allowed to talk about. Because I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Who else has a question? Hi. Hi, my name is, I'm short. <laughs> my, name is, there is, my name is Dawn Luz. I'm with Hollywood Connections on Tian Talk Radio. I'm on five stations at 106.1 FM. And my question is, are you doing any radio interviews that we can get you on our show in the future? We have producers, agents, casting directors. We have so many celebrities and voiceovers as well. And would you be open to be on the radio on 106.1 FM with us? Yeah, the, the only issue we have are logistic ones. Logistical ones. It's never a question of not wanting to do it. It's more a question of what we're obligated to do with respect to our being here. Because, you know, there's a... There's oh, a not now, of course. I've, I've talked to promoters and managers and everything. And, oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. Okay, so... Oh, sure, yeah. If, you, if, if there's a way that it can be worked out either where we're here... I mean, speaking for myself, I'm, I, Townsend is impossible. His ego is he's so arrogant. <laughs> I never... He was on radio for years in Cleveland and a big star, so now it's about awesome. none of people know what they're doing except me and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Why can't we do it like I did it? All of that bullshit. Um, the main but, question I have are a lot of people that call in the show, they want to know how to become a voiceover. Do they need a voiceover agent? Um, how do they get that break to get that voiceover agent? So that is my question. Great. To anybody. Anybody want to start? Well, Tommy, you, you were in radio, so. You can tell them what you need. A voice, so how does somebody that has a good voice, and many voices that want a good agent, how, what agents see, or what agents do you um, maybe could refer them to, or how do they get an agent for voiceover? That's a big question that comes so, in. So, so the question is basically, how does somebody get into voiceover? Is that what you're saying? Oh, well, how do you get an agent to represent you for voiceovers? Because a lot here in Florida are TV and film, and they don't do voiceovers. So do they have to go to LA or New York for voiceover managers, agents, to get them that is local uh, there are radio here and local agents that would do your local ads and stuff like that? Yes, there is. But the main thing is they're, they want to break into TV and film just like you. You know, do you have to go to L.A. to have that break? That's well, my question. Well, yeah, it, it used to be more so, um, you know, 20, 30 years ago mm -hmm. than it is now. But if you want to do animation, yeah, you've got to be in L.A. Right. Uh, for animation. Um, for other stuff that we do, that I do um, for promo, gosh, you can pretty much be anywhere these days uh, and, and do it. Um, commercial, same, same thing. Uh, the animation, you pretty much still need to be in L.A. Uh, unless you're up in Canada and it's Vancouver or Toronto or, you know. Great like advice. That's the last Florida. Second. Thank you, guys. No, it's, uh, is Florida right to work state? Yes. 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 So is Georgia, and, right. and there's actually quite a bit of voice work and live action, and actually a couple of animated shows in Atlanta. They do, um, oh God, Archer, they do in Atlanta. Um, the, but the main bulk of it is if you want to go work for the major studios, is, is still in LA. Mm -hmm. right. um, but my goodness, with the, uh, we're just, you know, the, again, new platforms, specifically YouTube having an opportunity to put up whatever you want and to be as creative as you want, yeah. um, it's free to put it out there. And then you get to a place, I mean, we, we all have worked with many folks who have become YouTube stars and earn significant money um, living wherever they want to live. And they, they find a niche and they put it out there. And, and you know, so you can still be as creative as you want and not have to move from Florida or mm -hmm. from Buffalo or whatever, but by and large, all of the work that we do is all union work, sanctioned by the Screen Actors Guild, SAG-AFTRA. You get an agent in LA. Rarely would an agent find you in Florida and say, oh, you're terrific. Mm -hmm. You know, we're gonna hook you up with Zephyr Box or Satellite, and it's virtually, you know, everybody's kind of replaceable. It doesn't mean that we're not good at our job, it just means that the talent pool is so deep in Los Angeles. Yes. Right. And that's pretty much where everybody goes. And now with the advent of celebrities, virtually everything that you see, one way or another, will ultimately have a movie star or a TV star in it as well. So Especially all the animated features. Yeah. Right. It's, it's all celebs. Right. Yeah, I just had Ellen Jacoby, you know, probably know her in Miami, on the show. She said, all the film work is going to Atlanta and Louisiana right now because right. of the state. And yeah. we're, we've lost a lot of money on the film industry here. Mm -hmm. So, as you know. But, uh, but thank yeah, well, you guys. there's all this, you know, I mean, I grew up in Michigan. Michigan Michigan is a right-to-work state. Right. The seat of the auto workers. It's, 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 as, they, as Mr. Dillon said, the times definitely are changing, you know? Um, North Carolina, Florida, Texas, um, uh, Georgia are all right-to-work states, which in this day and age, I think allows... Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Well, you live there. Yes, I do. As a but dancer. As a, as a, as a dancer. transvestite. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> 
I give you a lot of the budget for that. I do, I do. Anyway, thanks this, for your question. Thank you. This right lady's been right saying for a long time. Bless your heart. Yes, Sorry. Princess. Uh, oh, yeah. Real quick, I have a question for the moderator. In the previous panels, they asked the people in the question line who were able to sit to sit so the people behind them could see. Would you like to do that in this panel as well? Would I like to sit? No, they, in the previous panels, no, they had no, the people no, in the question line sit if uh, they were able to sit so the people behind them could see. Would you yeah. like us to do that? Sure. sure okay. Sure. Yeah, that's why I was sitting at the front so that hey, like, I wasn't blocking you the view of the people behind me. That's very, that's very I thoughtful. I mean, if people well. are able to sit, that's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. I know a lot of people are like, taking photos and stuff. I don't um, like so, to see so my question is, as, a, as voice, voice actors and for Ninja per Turtles panel, you probably get the question a lot about what's your favorite Ninja Turtles line to do, but my question is, it, do you have a favorite line from work that isn't your own that you can just endlessly quote, that you think is very quotable and you love to do the line? Like maybe you do the line at home, like some people like to quote The Princess Bride or Galaxy Quest, or what do you like to quote and do voices of in your own time? The white zone is for loading and unloading. <laughs> La zona blanca es para dejar la gente solamente, no estacionar. Unfortunately, that was mine also. So. Mine is, this is the best tasting tuna. I like that. Or, you're soaking in it. That's a good one. <laughs> I don't, we are so children of the 70s, that's crazy. Um, Speak for yourself. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 60s. Uh, yeah, I, um, I, you know, for turtles, it was pretty much always cowabunga, turtle power, and all yeah. that. I had one where Raphael said, hold the phone, I think we're on the same side in one episode, and I do say hold the phone probably more than I should, so maybe that had something to do with it. Barry? Well, I guess the one that I say to my wife most frequently. Wow. I don't want to, you know, I don't know if I want to hear this. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Nice. Thank you. That's why we love our bed. And then she says something back to me that I won't quote, but... Oh. <laughs> uh, my, my, mine was, uh, I think, um, when I did a show called The Tick, uh, Arthur... <laughs> Don't count your weasels before they pop, dink. <laughs> Arthur had a lot of, This always cracked me up. You, 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 can't, you, you can't fight evil with a macaroni duck. Yeah. Dick, you can't fight evil with a macaroni duck. I pretty much said that, or I don't think that's such a good idea, Tick. <laughs> not in the face, not in the face. Not in the face, not in the face! Oh my God. Uh, you, sir. Yes. Hello. Hello. Um, I'm a reporter for Hollywood Connections for 106.1 FM. And you guys were saying um, that everyone's replaceable in your industry. Uh, so my question is, how long have you guys been, um, you know, at the, at the top of your game, at your peak? Like, how long have you guys been? About six months. Six months? <laughs> At the no. peak? Yes. I, Forever. I, people don't know this, but I was the entertainment at the Last Supper. So, in, in those days, I went by Shecky of Arimathea. Uh, and Jesus, what a party. And, and everything was going great until Judas we were doing karaoke and he did backstabbers. I don't know, man. I've been in L.A. since 1978. Oh. And, um... Thank you very much for assuming that we're at the top of our game. I, that's very kind of you. We have all been, I think, uh, certainly incredibly fortunate to still be earning a living doing this. Um, it, it, is, uh, it is an unqualified honor to be in a position in which you're able to do something with people whom you choose to do it with, and then you get a check. It's, it's really, really great. And. Um, for my part, I believe that you're looking at four relative lottery winners, you know, because uh, it, it's, um, 
Barry has been working longer than any of them. Barry was, you know, as a child, was a singing, was a professional singer and an actor from the time he was very young. I started working at six years old, and it was hard to think that I reached the peak of my career at eight. <laughs> Cam was the one is from the King family. Which yeah, they be, have we used no to idea who that is. Well, uh, with all due respect, I bet you do. Yep, we, me too, sweetheart. And yeah, and this is one of the King family. What? Yes. Where? We ABC every night, every Sunday night, right? Yeah, I loved it. You, sir. Yeah, so, um, what are your favorite episode uh, line in the tortoise and can you say a turtle voice? What are your favorite line? Favorite line is in the turtles episodes? Yeah. yeah. And can you say it in your turtle voice? I think it's what I said. Yeah. We've got to think of something fast. <laughs> um, I have that on a sweatshirt. <laughs> I'll say it. Shredder, you ten face geek! Get back here and taste cold turtle steel! The transdimensional thingabob is is out of phase again. I don't know. I didn't have a favorite line. I just talked in these multi-syllables. I had no idea what it was. That is totally tubuloso, dude! There you go. Townsend's now a greeter at Walmart. Senor Sombrero. <laughs> oh, somebody. Yeah. What, who, me? The door. Yeah, it's you. Um, well, this is sort of a question for Cam Clark, but, um... Is he here? No. No way, is Cam Clark here? <laughs> no. You want him to try your hat on? <laughs> uh, mm, well, the, uh -oh. my question is, um... I was nowhere near the joint, I swear. <laughs> I was at home with my mother. I didn't know she was 16. She looked 17. <laughs> what I wanted to ask, because I was a huge fan of the Fire Emblem franchise, what was it like to voice um, the characters in Fire Emblem? In, fire em in what? Fire Emblem, the, the game that you recently did fire. voices for. <laughs> <Fire>. <laughs> Stump Cam! <laughs> the, the, the game, sorry, the game was called Fire and what? Fire, Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem. Was I good in that, y'all? Um, yes, you were. I'm sorry, I, I have to be honest in this life. Um, I don't know. Well, and, and to be and honestly, that that's, that happens to all of us as a result of our I'm good sorry. fortune. It absolutely does. Because we do things, and people, and I utterly understand the kindness with which those questions are asked. But sometimes people say, "Remember when you were blah 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 in that episode, of episode 17 of of <laughs> who stole you know, my Poopy the love dog or whatever?" And you go, "I don't." And then you come to find out on IMDb it was recorded in 1990. And as a result of our good fortune, we've done a lot of stuff since then. And our lack of memory. Yeah. <laughs> and so sometimes we don't recall. So I'm yeah. sorry, I wish I could, uh... <laughs> That's all right. But he was phenomenal. He was so good. Sure, I was awesome. Can you give me a line from it? Um, trying to think of one. See, you can't remember either. So, okay, next. Next. Nice touch, Preston. You, sir. Love your voices. Look at that jacket. Thank you. Can I have that? It's, wow! Want to put it on? Let's put it on. All right. Woo! Put it on the wrist. Wow. Wow. It's still in his underwear, you, you could recognize him from the Montgomery Ward catalog. <laughs> right? Nice. Yes, my, my big boy underpants. Yeah, boy underpants. <laughs> well, Mike points you with a good looking jacket. <laughs> yeah, he's a very handsome fellow. We love him. <coughs> You're in your hotel room and it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> 
much. Yeah. <laughs> That's great, man. What's your question, sir? Yes. Yes, my question. Love the voices, but there's one voice I always got a kick out of, and that was uh, the late, great James Avery playing oh. Oh, the yes. Shredder. Sure. Yeah. What was that like, having a big man like him? in the studio. He was a gentle giant. Yes. Yeah. Terrific. Huge talent, large fellow, and just delightful. And Thank laugh. Yeah. All the Always time. Laugh. Always Huge laugh. Huge laugh. Huge laugh. Yeah. Joyful and, yes. and jolly. Yeah. Always and laugh. Yeah. really appreciated that he was a very highly trained uh, actor. Um, so, and obviously she very good. Yeah. Went on to do you know, about 10 years of Fresh Prince or whatever yeah. it was. Uncle but was utterly um, well trained in the theater, Shakespearean, very highbrow stuff. And never once ever did I feel that James felt that he was better than the material. He was a big blast to play with. Yeah, he was. And very grateful to be there. Really just delightful. In fact, I recall him kind of apologizing that he just gotten this new series. You know, I can't be turtle, I can't be on the show anymore. Of course, we were yeah. great, you know, thrilled because he wanted to become uh, um, a rock star. You know? Great, thank you for asking about James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was wonderful, and what a voice. Ooh. Just incredible, incredible voice to listen to. And to I'll say this, I didn't know it was person, yeah. until like later on when the DVDs came out. When they yeah. Had, like, Uncle Phil did Shredder? Sure. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Thank you. You, sir. So we only have five minutes left, I just want to let you guys know, so we might not be able to get to everybody's question. Wait, wait. <laughs> uh, I, was just, I was just curious that, you know, Turtles is over like 30 years old now, and it's had like four different TV shows and all these movies. Like, you guys are basically the start of that with the cartoon. Does that ever like weigh on you, you know, that like, because I know Rob is the voice of Donatello now, and you guys have all come back for multiple episodes on the new show. Does it like dawn at you that you guys were like the beginning of the of this era? Kind of. And I will never let you forget. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, uh, it, it's, it, yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. And I was just asking to somebody earlier. I, honest to God, if if the pinnacle of my voice acting career was the fact that I got to be with these guys and be on the original show. That alone is something that you can sort of take to the end of your life and go, hey man, if nothing else, I got to be Raphael with Tony and Barry and Cam and James and Renee and Peter and all these people, just to be involved in something that became a part of the, of the culture, pop culture of the world. Yeah. A huge thrill. And I, I had not heard of the, the comic book, so like, you know, when my agent you know, called me and said, you know, you have an audition to read for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I really just thought he was joking. I absolutely, I said, don't you have anything better to do with your time, you know, than to call me and make up ridiculous titles. And, and he said, no, I'm not kidding. He said, it's a show. And, and when I went down and I just read the first few pages, just the sides, for that first episode. And I said, wow. This is funny and clever and interesting. It'll never work. <laughs> and uh, I was wrong. And I was just really thrilled to be wrong. Um, and I don't know and how And 35 years later, it's still not working. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how we struck such a chord. I really don't. But, but it's, it's certainly uh, an honor to have been involved with that and to see the reaction when I come to the cons of people really care about that show and, and that show really meant something to them. Well, what's fun now is to see the generations yeah. of Turtle fans. Like you're saying, you know, you, you, many of you guys now have kids of your own and are passing on our Turtles to the kids. I love meeting folks who come through line with, with our series and they've got their kids in tow. And in many cases, uh, families, you know, four or five members in the family who are all dressed in Turtle costumes. Um, it's fantastic. Yeah, of course, there are some people that think he's Donatello, but I, I don't know the original Donatello. <laughs> Everybody does. Um, you, my dear. Hi. No, Rob is wondering. We, we actually got to talk to each other yeah. uh, in an episode, which was very cool. Yeah, we're still two Donnies sitting around, a couple of white Dons sitting around. <laughs> Hi. Do you like pizza as much as your character does? And if well, you yeah. do. Say which one, what's your favorite pizza? Cameron? Uh, <laughs> fire <laughs> After you, my favorite kind of pizza 
is the round. <laughs> Wrong, dude. The real answer is anchovy and hot fudge. Marshmallow, hot fudge, Dorito, and cheese. Yeah, what's your favorite kind of pizza, sweetie? Pepperoni. Pepperoni? Oh, honey, you gotta aim higher than that. Pepperoni. Step outside your comfort zone. Have some tuna fish and hot fudge. Okay. You, sir. I'm with you. I like pepperoni. <laughs> Mushroom, sausage, and garlic. Hey, question. <laughs> what do you guys think of the reboots of, of the movies? Uh, the recent movies? I yeah, saw the, the first. I saw the first movie. I thought it was pretty entertaining. I liked it. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. yeah, I just saw the most recent. I thought it was terrific. And the guys My favorite was Gary Anthony Williams. Oh, movie. we love Gary. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So I actually have a one-man uh, boycott. I walk around there with a big sign saying, "Only the originals. Do not go in here." <laughs> That's why it was a flaw. Pretty sad. So I was gonna, that was my next question. Do you guys prefer the original tweet? Of course. Or the reboots? Was I in the reboots? No, no. Do <laughs> you guys prefer the reboot movies? Or the classic three? Oh, the, or the, you mean the original movies yes. versus the reboot? Which one do you guys prefer? Uh, I kind of have a soft spot for the original ones because my son was a turtle freak. My son is now almost 32, and he was a turtle fanatic. And so it was so great to have his old man be Raphael, you know? Yeah. And also these guys would sign stuff all the time. And so that was, that was great because it was my, I was able to share that with my son. But um, now I would presume that people your age or folks in their 30s who get to watch the new Turtle movies with their kids who love anything Turtle, it's, you know. But it was also a really valuable thing to learn as an actor, which was, and this has to be made clear, I think, too. We don't draw them and we don't write them. We're actors, and we're good at our job, and I'm very confident. But um, I learned a very valuable lesson about uh, about characters, especially in the animation business, in that none of us were involved in any of the features. And we were a little bit surprised. I know I was. We were kind of surprised yeah. when they didn't call us and all that stuff. But it didn't make a goddamn bit of difference in terms of ticket sales because the characters that's are right. popular. That's right. And, and to this day, that's the case, too. I'm grateful to be part of it. And I would argue an integral part. But still, it's about the characters, you know. And that was a great lesson. If I were prone to having an ego problem, it was the kibosh was put on that pretty quick. Well, aren't you the only... Uh, one of us who, who has been involved in another iteration of, uh, of I, the term? Yeah, as far as, and certainly in the cartoons, but there have been three Raphaels that I know of in cartoons. No one's right. Did a version. That's right. I think T TMNT or whatever it was on the feature. Then it was a Turtles Forever thing, and Sam Regal did it. Yeah. And then I did Raphael in our version. Um, Sean is now Raphael on the new show, Sean yeah. Astin. Yeah. So, hey, uh, I just a random question. Yeah. Which bathroom do the Turtles use? We, well, it depends if we're in North Carolina, we have to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, unfortunately... We one more, one more. Uh, one more, okay. Okay. One more. Is it really quick? Okay, you're the last one, go for it. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hi. My name's uh, Alfred Fox. So I'm, in, I'm a uh, independent filmmaker. I love you guys and everything. Real quick question, actually, it's a two-parter. It's very short. Number one, Michelangelo, uh, back in the, uh, the 90s cartoon on uh, Saturday mornings. What did you think about them replacing your nunchucks with a grappling hook? Think of, what did I think about what? What did you think about them replacing your nunchucks with a grappling hook? Oh, did yeah, you well, like it or did you not like it? Yeah, I was a, I was a, I was a little annoyed because I I didn't see the point in it. You know, it didn't seem like the nunchucks were that big a deal until you my son had a pair and he <laughs> knocked my wife out. But. Um, <laughs> You know, it was what it was. I, I thought, oh gosh, maybe they're making a bigger deal out of something that they need to. But to. And two, um, where can I get an episode of the Lost episode? Because I missed that one. It was a Lost episode of Turtles with a Techno Drum Mach 2. I missed it. I only caught 10 minutes of it. Do you guys have a copy of it? <laughs> <laughs> What's it worth to you? <laughs> My youth. My youth. I cannot die on this earth until I watch that entire episode. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. It might be Lost in Dimension X. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, buddy. No, I, I appreciate you asking. I don't know what episode we're talking about. Yeah, it's not. We're so old. Oh. <laughs>
So I have a copy of Barbie in yeah. Dimension X. <laughs> Klaus Barbie in Dimension X is really what's wrong. Malibu Barbie. Yeah, oh sorry. <laughs> um, but I have to tell you, and, and I know I'll thank you, first of all, well, the end of our show here, uh, thank you for having yes. us, and thank you so much. Yeah, really. Thank you so much for supporting us for 30 freaking years. Thanks for being such a great fan. Thanks so much. See you downstairs. At the count of three, we say turn the hour. Yes. One, two, three. Yeah.